Hello, everyone, and welcome to my presentation, the first part. So I'm presenting you flood and water level, level monitoring around the world. Oh, okay. First, a very quick introduction, who is Decent Lab? So, so Decent Lab uh, is a company founded it in 2008. So we have more than 15 years experience in wireless sensors. All our devices are 100% Swiss made engineering and also the manufacturing assembly is happening in Switzerland with Swiss um, partners and in, at Decent Lab. Today we have customers in over 65 countries or now almost 70 countries. We are six people. We're still looking for two more. <laughs> um, so what are we doing? So what you see here on this uh, slide is we have about 40 different um, LoRaWAN sensors in, in many use cases. Um, but our focus is in water-related monitoring. Okay, we have some smart agriculture and some air quality and some more. <clears throat> focus will be on the water level monitoring. So here uh, is a bit where we are distributed. Our main markets are in Europe and North America, but we have also um, some in South America, some uh, in Africa, in, in Asian regions. So with LoRaWAN, it's a great technology with long range transmissions. But um, yeah, this changed a lot in our business when we were before using LoRaWAN, other wireless technologies. Nevertheless, LoRaWAN is just one piece in the puzzle. So you have many challenges when you go outdoor, not anymore in the building or indoor. You know, it's all about robustness in any harsh environment. It's to keep the accuracy in every condition high enough that you deliver good sensor data because sensor data is the most crucial for the customer. Then the operations cost, meaning lifetime energy is, is relevant because uh, it keeps you down the operations cost which can mount up. Then sure, the range helps you to scale to, to really remote places or also in the urban areas when you have to cover multi-million cities. Um, and last but not least, uh, you have to have a security layer that it's, it's also safe and, and not easy to capture and so on. And sure, there's some cost drivers, but at the end, it, you have to be successful in your project. So when I come here to the challenges, range. And we hear a lot about LoRaWAN, the long range, and we did as you can see on this slide, transmission in a real, not chasing for records, but this was 2017, from a device to a gateway in Switzerland of 180 kilometers. We probably have more, but this is a real use case, not, not, not especially, and works overground great. But when you go to underground, <laughs> uh, wireless, uh, there are physical laws there. When we are underground in the gateway, overground, this, range can go really down to even 200 meters or even in buildings with a lot of metallic structures. So, but nevertheless, as you're underground, any installation is very demanding and is cost intense. So even 200 meters are of high value. And as well, when you look to the future, you have smart cities, you have a higher gateway connectivity and the high, uh, a higher density of gateways. So even now there's not that many yet, but I see in the future having much more gateways. And so also the challenging underground use cases, they will be easy to deploy. Gateways uh, locations is one thing. On the other side, <laughs> LoRaWAN is a great technology and these tra transceivers, but you have to design around your proper antenna, your proper device. Otherwise, all these advantages you have you can kill it by not doing a proper implementation. And some may have seen different IoT implementations. So this is uh, what we invested a lot to have good devices. Uh, yeah, all the design away from the LoRaWAN transceiver is as relevant as the LoRaWAN transceiver. We're talking all about LoRa here. 
Um, smart city now become what we do in water level monitoring. Um, <clears throat> also a challenge, we have a smart city and the environment and retention basin. So there are all kinds of uh, environments. So we have maritime environment, we have more in the countryside where we have not that dense uh, coverage or really small streams and we have to look that they are not flooded. So here there are some impressions you see on this slide how they can look like. And smart city is all kind of environment as you can see, and even small streams are like that. <clears throat> One of uh, the large use cases we do uh, provide uh, our devices are for this in the before or in the Smith is the overground small creeks or channels. Before they go into the underground, you have this uh, retention um, um, structure. And when you have a heavy stray, uh, rain event, there you can debris pile up. And so the, rain, uh, the flooding water goes quickly into the road. And as this would happen, you have it uh, distributed in the neighborhood. So an alarm is here critical, it can be five minutes to get somebody gets out and remove this debris and you can um, prevent such a flooding. We had the, such a case in a German city where there was an alarm from us and they said due to that alarm, they were able to solve uh, um, and to, to remove that. And that scales very well uh, and is an important thing and you can uh, save a lot of damages in, in urban areas. <clears throat> now, also um, for longer term, like flooding, as you can see on that picture, we have uh, these ultrasound level sensors and as well, these rain gauges measuring the precipitation because heavy ra rain events are very local. So, so even in a city, you have not everywhere the strong rain. And so you may also need to take action to reroute the traffic or block uh, uh, on the passage, like on the picture we have seen here, which is very close to our office. So that was a nice one-to-one -one demo happening outside. In underground, we have, beside the, the Laura Van range due to the underground, it's also a very difficult structure. As you can see here, this, I don't know if you see that very well. These are channels, they're not like the open water where you can measure one surface. These are, these are structures for this channel with having different diameters or, and when you want to measure contact free, uh, which is needed in sewer channels, you have uh, obstacles that, that the response of your ultrasound sensors may have difficulties or can also have foam and waves building up. And so it's not that easy to measure in such environments good values from a sensor perspective, but yeah. A lot of experience and know-how helps uh, and you learn a lot along the time. Um, even we build robust devices. Uh, nature is always also around. Uh, there are other cases. <clears throat> yeah, even we want to have, uh, there is certain uh, maintenance. It may occur some places you ha can have it for many years maintenance free. But sometimes uh, nature is strong and say, this is a nice housing for my spider nest. Uh, there are also other things like, um, you know, chewing at the things um, by, by, by animals. Um, yeah, but we do our best and uh, then you need to find protections. Also rodents may, uh, may bite cables, so you do. So you see, you're also confronted with such problems in a scale out in, in, in the environment. <clears throat> this uh, was summarizing, the, again, also the inst installation, it's not only the, the, the geometry of these channels, but it's very easy in the indoor, <laughs> it's then easy overground outdoor, but when you then go underground, it, it takes you uh, quite a challenge to mount. So, so so you need a lot good planning. You may have to separate the transceiver from the sensor unit to get the lower van coverage, but also then to measure the level at the right position. Here's some illustration with what you are confronted in the different environment. 
challenges in the cities when you mount it too close to, to the citizen. Um, <laughs> uh, sometimes you have to if you want to have a measure impact directly to the human, so you have to measure at, at, at the head height. Um, so you have to build robust devices if they're very close to like these uh, tram lines or local trains, they may be um, exposed to some fights. This one um, has some, the, on the one picture has some issues, but still working even a bit. <laughs> uh, but on the other side, we, we are also a nice object for having street art. I think it's not a Banksy, but but still, I think something, some cool thing when you see your device gets upgraded by nice street art. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, it's not only about flood monitoring, more, more we have here also uh, Swiss hydroelectric power generation plant. They use the level not for only the heavy rain events, but you also have, must report the water levels of your streams and rivers and also from the upstream and downstream and guarantee for the environment to have uh, enough flow that the, the environment and, and the, the, the life in, in the river remains uh, alive and is not exposed to, to harm. Um, so we have now seen smart cities, more established cities, we have been with our water level measurements and borehole monitoring as well in smart cities in very far remote and special, special um, conditions. So we have refugees camps where you can have a couple of hundred thousand people living. There's almost no infrastructure. And there you can build up a lower one network and then immediately scale uh, um, relevant infrastructure in a very easy way. So we have done water level measurement borehole me measurement to measure the wells. And so, um, so this is Laura Van brings their infrastructure and, and the smart city alive in very relevant zones and you can conserve a lot of resources and supply. Another um, use case uh, is uh, district heating networks. So we here have uh, leakage detection. So we have um, district heating on the right side you see the the, the pipe and the, when you go for maintenance it has to be dry and you want to, so and to access and on the other side you don't know when you do monitor is it from the uh, rain rain water going uh, into the in, into the in this cabinet or is it a district heating so you measure pressure and the temperature and then so the level of water, and then you can decide, is it uh, rainwater, which is uh, in ingressing into it, or is it the district heating, which has a leakage? Um, so <clears throat> here quickly, um, you see also that water and water monitoring is also relevant for um, plantations where you have groundwater and um, you need to, to irrigate and manage water because it's a rare uh, good. Um, the same for the district, uh, from, from the irrigation. Uh, I want to come to an end um, with some quality sensors because um, now um, I would like to hand over uh, to the next speed where Scott is showing more use cases uh, where he's also using decent lab sensors and what you can do with them. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.